Imagine that you win a trip. It's a safari to Africa. And so the time comes and you travel there and you're out on the safari, you're in one of those open-sided Jeeps and they're taking you across the countryside and the hope while you're out there is that you're gonna see some wildlife and some different animals and you come up to a stop and they say, okay, if you want to, you can get out here. And so you ask the guide and you say, well, is it safe? Are there any animals that we should be afraid of? Are there lions or uh, tigers or, or anything like that? And he was like, oh yeah, no, there, there, there could be. And you're like, well, do we have any defense against these animals? And they're like, well, no, just take your chances. Just go out and see what happens. You would never get out of that Jeep, right? You would say, no, I'm good. I'm gonna stay right inside here. But what's so funny to me is we never think twice when we get out of our car and walk into here. Everything about this place is designed to get you to send money. I mean, the, the look of the displays, the size, the color, the height, the pricing, everything about it is designed to get us to spend money. And most of us come in without our guard up or any kind of defense at all. So number one, if we're serious about achieving minimalism in the new year, we have to stop shopping. We have to stop the influx of stuff coming into our house. And one way we can do that is being aware of all of the tactics when we're in a store. So remember the way they place stuff in the store, the way they make, they create the displays and, and where they put it, that all is designed <laughs> to get us to buy more. It's not by chance, right? They do a lot of research to get us to buy more stuff when we are in the stores. So we have to find tactics to keep from purchasing. One thing that's been especially helpful for me is to do store pickup in instead of coming into the actual store. And if it's helpful, imagine that you're being preyed on by a lion while you're here. Okay, so let's get out of here before I do actually end up buying something, but don't let me forget at the end, I wanna share with you one of the most surprising things I've found about minimalism in this past year. Now tip number two is to have a set day of the week when you move stuff out of your house. So when you visit the donation center or even list things on Marketplace. So for me, I actually like for this day to coincide with garbage day. So our goal is always to have the garbage can full and drop off our donations on the same day. This can also be the day where we list things on Marketplace or on free cycle sites. Basically knowing each week you have a set time when you're gonna intentionally move stuff out of your house. Isn't it amazing how quickly a week and a month and a few months and a year can go? By having a set day on the calendar each week, you are gonna be so amazed by how much stuff you move out of your house because it gets so much easier when we're in this habit and we do it week after week after week. Okay, we're back home now. We talked about stopping stuff coming in and also using our garbage day as motivation. But what if you're like, oh no, it's Friday, it's my garbage day. I don't have a bag of garbage or a box of donations. This is where tip number three comes in. We have to find ways to make a game out of it and to make quicker decisions. Hey Corbin, uh, will you play a game with me? Sure. So it's garbage day and my goal is every garbage day to have the garbage can full and to have a box of donations, but I don't have my box for this week yet. So, will you fill this box and I'll fill this box? Wait, you gave me the bigger box. <laughs> I did give you the bigger box, didn't I? Okay, fine. I will switch them. Will you fill this box and I'm gonna go work to fill this box? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Many of us are chronic overthinkers. Decluttering goes really slow for you because you're just thinking and overthinking and wanting to really make sure that you make a very good decision about every item in your house. And that's not wrong. It just can work against our decluttering efforts. So that's where having some of these tricks and this deadline on the calendar every week can be so helpful for you. So then we're gonna take our box and we're just gonna make a quick pass around the house. So again, we're not gonna look to fully declutter our closet or fully declutter the kitchen, but I can go into my closet and say, eh, you know, my sister gave me this shirt. I've never actually worn it. I hung it in here thinking someday I would wear it, but I, this is inventory that I don't wanna manage in the new year. I want my house to work for me and to function very well, so I'm gonna put it into the box. So we're making quick decisions, just looking for stuff we're clearly not using. So again, we don't have to make super hard decisions <laughs> right now, that's not the point. The point is to fill this up, and what we're doing is strengthening our decluttering muscles by doing this. You're gonna find, if you do this week in and week out, you're gonna become very confident in your decision-making skills. 
And that also leads us to tip number four, is to look at your history. So recently I did a video, um, it was five things to declutter before Christmas, but in it I talked about this idea of safety. Often we're very hesitant to get rid of stuff because stuff gives us the illusion of safety. Let me say that again. Stuff gives us the illusion of safety. And so it was so fun to read your comments, especially a comment like from Katie that says, I used to think that the stuff helped me to feel safe and secure, but it really made me feel anxious and stressed out. So our goal with it is safety. I understand how we acquire it and why we do that. But unfortunately, if you look at your history with stuff and if you look at past seasons where you were incredibly stressed out and maybe you were going through a crisis or something very difficult, did you rely on the stuff in your house? Did that help you to feel secure? Most likely not. It comes from having peace and being of sound mind so that we can problem solve, so that we can think critically and also surrounding us by people who can be there to help us out in times of need and for us to have the bandwidth to be able to return that favor as well. All right, I've been hearing a lot going on upstairs. So I'm gonna check on them and see if they were able to fill up that box. Oh, wow. Did you fill the box? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Was it very hard? No. Awesome, good work. And so the only thing that happens when we have the goal of filling one box is that it gives us some, some kind of limit or boundary. Most of us are fully capable of filling one box when we know what it is that we're aiming for. And of course this ties into number five, to look at every item in your house as inventory that you have to manage. Now here's the thing about inventory, is that the amount of inventory that we can personally manage fluctuates depending on the season you're in. So you might be in a really busy season right now, depending on the age of your kids. Are you working, not working? Do you have family members that have extra needs? That is all stuff that takes away from our bandwidth and our ability to manage the inventory in your home. So again, I have said this a hundred times, but I will say it again. You're not lazy, you're not disorganized, you're not unmotivated. All of those things that you have let this stuff say to you about yourself. It's not true, you're just trying to manage too much inventory. And it is honestly magical when we get the amount of inventory in our house down to a level that we personally can manage. It is the most freeing experience and I believe you're gonna find that other areas of your life start to work so much better as well. So again, that's why we're gonna stick together in the upcoming year so that we can work together to lower our inventory and you're gonna find peace of mind. You're gonna find potentially that you feel less anxious, more on top of things, not behind. You're gonna get along better with your kids. It is truly the gift that keeps on giving. And then I try to get the donations into the car right away before anyone starts to second guess their decisions. <laughs> Oh yeah, and we have to talk about that thing about minimalism that I thought you might be surprised by. And what that is, is that it feels very normal. It doesn't feel weird. I think uh, many of us worry that if we got our house overly simplified, it would just feel off, it would feel weird. It wouldn't feel homey or cozy, or it would feel awkward when people come over and wonder where all of our stuff is. And what I would tell you has been the coolest thing about minimalism for us is that it doesn't feel weird. In fact, it feels completely natural. It feels like, wow, this is how much my brain was meant to manage, and man, was I overloading it in the past. I mean, I didn't even give myself a chance in the past with how much inventory I was trying to manage, right? So if there are things in your home that are not serving you right now in this current season, I believe too, if you would stop bringing stuff into your house, use your gar garbage day to your advantage, make games out of it, and trust your experiences that you too could find so much freedom in your house in this coming year, and it'll be one of the best things that you have ever done. Well, of course, we have tons and tons of videos to help you do that. Like I said, I'll link to that one about moving past chronic overthinking. That's a really helpful video, but we have every other topic covered as well. I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.